Hi everyone, my name is Steve. Today we are going to talk about topological sorting. This is a very common and very useful algorithm. First off, what is topological sorting? In computer science, a topological sort or topological ordering of a directed graph is a linear ordering of its vertices such that for every directed edge uv from vertex u to vertex v, u comes before v in the ordering. What can we do with this algorithm? There are a lot of very useful places or applications that are actually using topological sorting. For example, build systems, either you use Gradle or Ant. How does your program build? How does the build tools manage the dependencies? For example, if you want to build class A, you need to build class B first, right? So in the very complex build systems, how does it know which package, which objects to be built first? That is topological sorting. And also there is task scheduling. How can you schedule tasks in the very distributed systems, right? Which tasks should be built first? Which tasks should get scheduled first? And then there's also school class prerequisites. For example, for us computer science students, you might need to take, say, for example, basic introductory classes for computer science first before you can take advanced data structures and algorithm classes. These are the prerequisite classes that, that you need to fulfill before you can take more advanced classes. These are just a few applications where topological sorting can be used. Of course, there are many, many other places that is being heavily used. With that said, that just means this this algorithm that we're going to talk about today is very useful. Any conditions that we need to be aware of for topological sorting? Of course, there are. Let's look at this. A topological ordering is possible if and only if the graph has no directed cycles. That means this is a DAG, meaning a directed acyclic graph. The keywords here are only, no directed cycles. A, deck. a topological ordering is only possible if this graph has no directed cycles. In other words, if there are directed cycles, we cannot find a topological ordering because there is a cycle, right? Let's take a look at one example. We'll see what that means. Suppose we're given this, the graph on the left, we're given this graph. What that means is, say, if this is class diagram, if you want to take the class number three, you have to take class number two and zero first before you can take class three. That's what it means. So we're trying to find if it's possible that we can take all of these eight classes. Is it possible? Or in other words, we'll first figure out whether this is a valid DAG, directed acyclic graph. Let's take a look. No, it's not. Why this is not a valid deck? Because there is a cycle. Let's take a look. So say if we want to take class three, we have to take class five first. And so if we want to take class five, we have to take class seven first. And if we want to take class seven, we have to take class three first. It's not possible that we can take these three classes because it depends on each other. You cannot take three because you didn't take five. You cannot take five because you didn't take seven. You cannot take seven because you didn't take three. There is a cycle in this graph, which means this is not a valid deck. In other words, it also means we cannot find a valid topological ordering of this graph. All right, I hope that makes sense. Any deck that has at least one topological ordering, and there are algorithms known for constructing a topological ordering of any DAG in linear time. So pay attention here, there is at least one topological ordering. So that could be multiple valid topological ordering. And there are algorithms, people study for this, people spend a lot of time studying for this. There are multiple algorithms that can construct a topological, a valid topological ordering of any DAG in linear time. And today we'll go through one of the algorithms, which is Kahn's algorithm, invented by a computer scientist in 1962. And there is a DFS, depth first search. If you want to study the DFS approach for topological ordering, definitely hit subscribe button and stay tuned. I'll have another video to cover that algorithm. But today we'll focus on the Kahn algorithm, which I think is very cool. Let's take a look at this example. This is a different one, and this is a valid DAG. For any valid DAG, we learn that there are at least one valid topological ordering. So for example, this one, one of the valid topological ordering is we can visually go through this from left to right and top to bottom. So left to right, we always go left to right and then top to bottom. So that is two, zero, one, right? And then three, four, right? We have finished two, zero, one, and then we can take class three and then four 
Then we can finish since we took three and one. Both prerequisites for five have been taken, so we can take five and seven as well, we, since we took three and zero already, right? So seven and then six. So one of the valid topological ordering of this graph is two, zero, one, three, four, five, seven, six. Of course, it's not unique. For example, this, we can have another valid topological ordering by the smallest number available vertex first. For example, this one, which means zero, one, two, right? The first one is finished. Which one can we go next? That is three. This is the next smallest available. And then four, and then five, six, and seven. Right? We can take either six or seven, but since this one, we want to go with the smallest numbered available vertex first. So we'll put six before seven. Do we have anything more? Yes, we do. We can go from the fewest edges first. Which one has the fewest edge? Two, two has only one. But for these two vertices, they have two. So we'll go, we'll start from this one first, two and zero, one. And then which one is the next that has the fewest edges? That is four right? Four has only one, but for three, it has three edges connected with vertex three. So we'll do this, two, zero, one, then four, three. After that, which one do we have? We have five. Five has two edges, and then seven and six. I hope this makes sense. We still even have more valid topological ordering. We can go from largest numbered available vertex first. These three, which one has the largest number? That is two. So two, then we can have zero. So after taking two and zero, three has, three's prerequisites are two and zero have been taken. So we can take three and then we can take seven, right? Because seven has two prerequisites. One is three, one is zero. So both of them have been taken. So we can take seven. Why do we take seven? Because we want to go with the largest number of available vertex first. So we take seven and then we take one because we cannot take five because one is a prerequisite for five. So we take one and at that moment, we can take either four and five, but we want to take the largest available vertex first. So we take five and then we take four. In the last, we take six, right? Okay, and then and this is not the end. There is still another valid topological ordering. This is a very arbitrary one. So it doesn't go through with any one of these, which means we can just arbitrarily return one. This is just an example to show there are multiple valid topological ordering for a valid deck. The thing to take away from this is for any valid deck, there is at least one valid topological ordering. Otherwise, it's not a valid deck. As I mentioned before, today we're going to cover Kahn's algorithm. How does this algorithm come into play that helps us to solve to find the valid topological ordering? We'll start off with a list of start nodes, which means they are, they, for these nodes, they don't have any incoming edges and we'll put them into a set, we'll just call it a start set. At least one such node should exist in the non-empty acyclic graph. Otherwise, we have nothing to start with, which means we cannot find a valid topological ordering. And the result is an empty list that will contain the sorted elements. This is the pseudocode for the rest of the algorithm. So we'll just start with start set. As long as the start set is not empty, we'll keep iterating through this part of the code. For every time we'll take a node n, from the start set, and then we add the end to the tail of the result. And then we'll go through the edges. We take one edge out of the edge list. We check if for each node n, this is a different node n, with an edge e from n to m. n is the one that we took from the start set, and m is the node that we're checking. If there is such an edge, we'll mark e as removed, which means we have visited this edge, or in other words, we have taken the prerequisite classes. After we do this multiple times, or at least once, if M does not have any incoming edges anymore, that means we have visited those edges. So we'll just add this M into this start set. So we'll continue this loop until we have exhausted every single vertex in this start set. At that moment, we should have removed all of the edges. After we break out of this while loop, we'll check if there is still any edges. If that's the case, we'll just return false because there is no way we can build a topological, a valid topological ordering out of this graph. Otherwise, we can just return result, which is a one of the valid topological ordering. 
I hope this makes sense. It's invented by Kahn in 1962, a very classic computer science program. Now let's take a look at one example. We know these three vertices, they don't have any incoming edges. Or if we think of them as the classes, they are the most basic freshman classes. You don't need to have any prerequisite. These are 2, 0, 1. So we'll call them as, remember, this is the algorithm we just discussed. So we'll put the start nodes into a hash set, which is called start set. So 0, 1, 2. This is our start set. Result is an empty list at the beginning. Then we'll start the algorithm. We'll loop through the start set. First, we'll take 0 out, out of the start set. Then we have 0 to 3. We can remove this edge. We'll mark this edge as removed. Next, we have 0 to 7. We can mark 0 to 7 as removed. There is nothing else that we can do. So we'll just continue beginning from the start of the while loop. So next element, next vertex that we can take out is 1. So we'll take 1 out of the start set. We'll mark 1 to 5 as removed. Next, we can mark 1 to 4 as removed. But at this moment, we'll think about 4. This node 4, it doesn't have any other incoming edges now, which means we can add, we can take this class number 4, we can add this 4 into start set, right? So what we'll do is we'll just add this 4 into this start set. Okay, so we have one more vertex in start set. Next, we'll take out 2. So 2 has an incoming edge to where? To 3. So we'll mark this one as removed. At this moment, what we noticed is 3. So 3 doesn't have any incoming edges now. We're going to add 3 into start set, right? So we have 3 into start set. Next, what are we going to do? We'll continue to take more. What's the next one? We'll take 3. So 3 has quite a few edges going out, which means it's a prerequisite class for 5, 6, and 7. So we'll visit every single one of them in order. So first we mark 3 to 5 as removed. Again, let's take a look for vertex 5 we have removed both of its two incoming edges. One is from three, the other is from one, which means five doesn't have any incoming edges. So we'll add five into this start set. We'll continue. Next, we mark three to seven as removed. Then we'll take a look at seven. Does seven have any other incoming edges that we haven't visited, we haven't removed? No, which means we can add node seven into start set. Okay, next, We'll visit 3 to 6, 3 to 6. This is the one that we're going to visit, or in other words, we'll remove this edge. But can we put 6 into start set? No, because we haven't visited 4 yet. So next step is we'll take out 4. We take 4 out of the start set. Then we can mark 6 to 4 as visited. Okay, at this moment, we have taken both prerequisite classes for 6, which is 3 and 4. So at this moment, 6 doesn't have any incoming edges. So we'll add 6 into this start set. All right, perfect. So what do we have that we still haven't visited in the start set, which is five, six, and seven. Let's do that. So we take out five, but at this moment, all of the edges you see in this graph have been removed, which means we have visited them. So no edges remaining. We can quickly break out the loop, nothing to be removed. So we're done with five. How about six? No edges, same thing. How about seven? No edges, okay. So in the end, we have this valid topological ordering. We're done. Remember, this is just one of the valid topological ordering. Time complexity of this algorithm is big O of V plus E. V stands for number of vertices. E stands for number of edges in the graph. That means this is a linear algorithm. I hope this walkthrough makes sense to you. 